I think that goes into, you know, we've had the discussion before, you in particular on many of your shows have talked about every wrestling show now, viewership declines throughout the show, where it used to always build to the main event and would peak at the end of the show. And I think this is exactly why that shows no longer build to anything in that we often start hot and then it's quiet and then it's up and then it's down. And then it, it's like at no point do you start and build up quite often, you know, they do a big, huge segment in the opener and then they get that big crossover segment. And it's like sometimes they'll have a main event. Sometimes they won't. And it's like the show just has random peaks and valleys throughout the three hours or two hours. And this is for all brands. You know, they started with Shaq. And, you know, then you had the, the Tully thing for us old guys that popped huge for him. And then by the time you get to 10 and Max Caster, it's like, this is definitely like my interest level is fading off. And to be honest, I find this with many, many matches now, too. They don't even build to a finish. You know, how many times has, you know, you and Vinny in particular, this is a really great match, then we got a shit finish. It's like, I think way too many people in the industry have lost sight of that build. And I see it on indies a lot. And I see it on big major shows, too, where they have this really cool idea for this amazing spot. And let's do it at the beginning when we're fresh. And it's like, your match isn't even peaking. You know, we got to do the big dive spot for the commercial break. So we have a intriguing you know, break spot to hold them for the commercial. And it's like, so we're putting this exciting thing at the two minute mark. Cause we did one minute of a match and we go to break and it's like, we need this big, exciting spot here. And it's like the match isn't building anymore. And I think there's an overall tendency now that things don't feel as significant and important. Emotional investment is probably at an all time low because people switch constantly. And sometimes angles are dropped constantly that when you remove emotional investment and you remove a constant build toward a climax, it's, I like wrestling because there's a bunch of cool shit on it, and I'll tune in and see some cool shit, and as I start getting to my cool shit quota, I go, ah, I've, I've seen enough, I'll tune in again next week. Where back in the day, and not on every show, obviously, because even Saturday night's main event, but that was a time slot, they planned it that way, but if you tuned into the show and right at the start, they talked about the main event. We've got this big match coming. And then you had your squash matches and your promos and shit. And the main event was this big match. The show built to something. And throughout the whole show, you were excited and anticipating this big thing. And, you know, you didn't have four way. How many times have we, you know, and retro shows. So it's not just the new kids. It's again, my generation too where you talk about how, you know, the match starts, there's this big brawl through the crowd, and then it's settled down into a tag match. It's like, we're not building anymore. I think... You know the it, other thing, too, and this might not be... Uh, this this may not be anything, but... You look at the, the demos, and, you know, Raw does well, 18 to 49, because they have so many viewers, and AW does fairly well, 18 to 49... But, I mean, no matter what wrestling promotion you're talking about, there's a lot of older people watching. NXT is all old people. AEW's average age is 47 or whatever. Raw, I think, is higher than that. But when I think about how is life different today compared to how life was different when we were watching in the 90s, everyone's attention span is shorter because... We have phones, we have our laptop, we have our iPad. We're watching on the TV with our phone in front of us, et cetera, et cetera. I know that myself personally, I'm not, I'm 45. I'm not in the 50 plus demo or anything yet, but I am. I start raw and as much, and it was not like this is past Monday because Miz was champion, but in general, I still kind of look forward to raw because I've been a fan my whole life. And I start watching the show and like, if it sucks right off the bat, I'm out. Okay, I'm just zoned out, and I, I have to force myself to pay attention and take my notes. If the show is good, I still find myself at some point during the show, middle of the first hour, whatever, I'm looking to see how long is the show gone? How much longer do I have left? What's going on on the fucking board? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow, that's I'm, bad. Well, it's just the way it is. And I feel like... 
and maybe like I don't know, but when I look at the eighteen to forty nine numbers, when I look at the teenage numbers or whatever, and they're certainly not sky high compared to the old people. I wonder how much of that is kids and eighteen to forty nine males. They don't like watching fake fighting, or is it more that they're in that generation where I ain't watching this show for three fucking hours? Like, I don't have the attention span for it. Whereas the older people, they grew up in an era where you just sat there and you watched the whole fucking show. So I don't know if maybe that has anything to do with it. But part of it, I believe, is also this self-fulfilling prophecy of... And I know this for AEW. Like, they study these numbers. And this Shaq show, they know what the pattern of viewership is for their show. That's why Shaq opened... That's why they didn't save Shaq for the main event. It's sort of like, you know, Dave argues they should have because he thinks if they saved it for the main event, they would have done 1.13 million people in the last 15 minutes of Dynamite. I don't think that would have happened. And if it did, I think that when people heard it was going on last, the people who wanted to see Shaq, they're not going to sit there for the show. They're going to go watch something else and then come back in the last 15 minutes. So I just feel like this is what fans do now partially because of short attention spans and they watch the show early and then they kind of trickle off afterwards no matter what and part because the promoters know that's what happened so now they design their shows that way so it's now it's a self-fulfilling prophecy to further people's short attention span and inability to make it through three hours yeah i think there is something to the the younger generation like obviously younger than both of us that it is the gifable world, right? It's like, I don't need to watch the whole match. I can just watch the six gifts of the cool things and I'll move on. And they're not used to, because you mentioned about, you know, watching the whole show just because they're lazy. It's like, I'm old enough to remember when changing the channel required you to get up off the couch and turn the dial on your TV. And there was times that you'd watch the show that followed the show you were watching just because it's like I don't hate it enough to get up off my couch and turn the actual dial to see what else is on, you know, before remotes. So, you know, my generation is far more habit forming and just watch the show because that's what you do. But I know like my kids that are, you know, more into YouTube and TikTok and all this other crap. It is about just picking up the sound bites of what you need. It's like, just give me the Coles Notes version. I'm not reading the whole book. So I, I think that's just a fact of life that you're going to have to deal with. But I do believe that if we tried to get more emotional investment into the story, then the music between the notes, if you will, would be more important because you are more invested. And the more we do performance art and spots, then the more gifable the show is, which is great if you want to trend on Twitter, but I don't know if it's as great for holding viewership. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.